Welcome to uh, the presentation by DonPotter.net. My name is Don Potter. My website is DonPotter.net. I am a bilingual and a reading remedial reading teacher for the uh, Odessa Christian School. I'm retired from the public schools and I am excited today about coming into your home, your classroom, uh, and presenting the Reading Triangle. The Reading Triangle you're going to find very shortly is one of the most powerful theoretical tools for understanding reading, how reading should be done, and how we can be successful with every child. The Reading Triangle will it show that there are two perceptual paths to reading. The meaning path, that is where that your initial goal is to get right to the meaning, or the sound, reading from the sound, the sound path, where that we're going to go to the sound first and then we're going to get to the meaning. A lot of people believe that if you teach sound first, students are going to become word callers. Uh, they'll just be able to sound out all the words, read a page perfectly, and not tell you anything that's on the page. That is a myth. There's only two ways to teach reading. And the sound method is the correct way. Let me show you how this is going to work. The reading triangle, everything we do, we're trying to get to the meaning, right? So let's write meaning up here. We want a child to get to the meaning. Even though we believe that you start with the sounds, the meaning's the goal. Everybody's trying to get to the meaning. The question is, what's the best way to get to the meaning? Now, let's take a look at this. I'm going to draw the triangle. Notice these two legs are longer, and then these are shorter. Over on this side, we're going to, we're going to label the four corners. This angle over here is going to be the visual now by visual, I mean the word on the page. What you see when you open up a book and you start reading, the first thing you see is you see the word. Now, when you start, you take a child that doesn't know how to read, you bring him into a classroom, you're going to teach him how to read. What is the best way to teach that child to read? To teach him the letters of the alphabet and their sounds? Or to start teaching him, say, the 220 dots list words by just flashing the words or showing the words with a picture? The visual... The meaning method says, by the way, the meaning method is also called the sight word method, whole word memorization method, look, say, whole language popular today. And in many of its forms, guided reading in the lower grades, now not in the upper grades, but in the lower grades, if you start out with guided reading, you start teaching students to, to look at a word, even whether it's in a book, whether it's on a flashcard, a board, wherever, and just memorize that word, that would be an example of this method. It's going to be the counterclockwise method, our uh, perceptual path to reading. If you go straight from the visual to the meaning, you've memorized the word. Uh, let's just take the word. Uh, let's just take the word bug, for example. You show a student a picture of a bug. You show them a, a flash card with uh, the word B-U-G on it, and you say, "This is the word bug," and they say, "Okay." So they're going to memorize this word. By the way. If you're looking at something as a whole, you're using the right side of the brain, right? The non-language side of the brain, by the way. And so the student's going to be looking at this more from the shape, the outside. Letters are more or less inconsequential. They're looking at, at the shape of the word unless they're taught by the sound method. Now, guessing is built into the meaning method. Now, we call this a meaning method not because we don't believe in teaching meaning or we call it, believe that meaning is not important. It's the most important thing, but it's the route to the meaning that's the important thing. Can we leap from the visual straight to the meaning? And if we do that, we're going to be using the right side of the brain. We're going to be looking at words as whole. Now, to get from the meaning, on this side, we're going to put the sound. To get from the meaning to the sound, once we've memorized this word, we are going to... Now, I'm going to put some question marks there. We are going to have to guess. Because it, we've memorized the word, but did you, there are words that look like that, such as the word big, ball, bug, Well, we got the same shape in every one of these. I don't think kids are really skipping vowels or having trouble with the, the vowels. I think they're just looking at the word at the outside, so they've memorized. 
By the way, did you know if you memorize, if you memorize about 50 words, you can read almost 50% of anything in the English language. If you read 300 words, you can read 75%. And if you can learn 1,000 words, uh, you can read close to 90% of anything in English language just by guessing, guessing, guessing. Only sometimes they get the wrong word. Now, the other way to teach reading, the way that I advocate, and where I believe we get the most success, is to start with the visual. The letters on the word go to the sound. Once the student gets the sound, now here's what, now notice this is longer and this is shorter. Now the reason is you have to use the conscious mind in order to get to the meaning. Meaning is processed in the conscious mind. We, we think and we have our concepts there. So to go from the visual to the meaning, we have to make this leap. But when we go from the visual, and it cannot be automated because the conscious mind or the meaning is in the conscious mind. We, we think with the conscious mind. So here we're reading the words with the conscious mind. But when we use phonics first, when we use the sound method, we're going to go from the visual over to the sound by sounding out the words. For example, bug, B, then U, these are the sounds, or the phonemes as we call them today, G, going from right to left, bug, bug. Now a student already knows what a bug is. So he is automatically, once he's, and this is a shorter path because it can be automated, it can be made subconscious. The meaning method uses the conscious mind to read, whereas the sound method is going to use the subconscious mind. We're going to automate this process and bingo, what happens? He identifies the word in his memory, which he already knows, and zaps right straight to the meaning. Now, notice here, going from the sound to the meaning, there's no guessing. No guessing here, no guessing here. So the student, on his, in his journey of learning to read, goes this way. Now, this is processed, going from the sound, we process on the left side of the brain. The visual is processed on the right side of the brain. And folks, whichever we teach first, will develop a reflex that will be with these students the rest of their life. And somebody's going to say, well, how do you go about teaching if this is the best way? How do you go about teaching it? Aha! Well, first, before we do that, okay, let me show you. This is called, I hope you can see it, Blend Phonics, Reading Made Easy for First Grade by Hazel Lawrence, published in 1980. This is an infallible way to teach all children how to read. There's 1,446 words in this program that can be taught in three to four short months in any first grade class in America. To help you with this, I've also included, um, I hope you can see this, Reading Made Easy. This is a certificate of completion and we have Reading Made Easy with Blend Phonics, a progress chart. The way you're going to teach this, let me use a little bit of my time here. You're going to start out very, very simple. For example, the first word is bat. You're going to write a B on the board. You're going to tell the boys and girls, this is the letter B. And you teach this letter name and sound at the same time. This is the letter B, and it says B. Then under it, you're going to write A. This is the letter A. And they'll repeat after you, A. And you say, A says ah. And they're going to say ah. Then you're going to write the two together. This is called a blend. And they're going to say bad. Notice you are going Left to right, directional guidance is built in to blend phonics and will eliminate the guessing and the poor reading that's brought on by the meaning method, the method of jumping straight to the meaning. Now what's cute is the kids will say, oh, I know that word, that's bat. And the truth of it is, it is. But it could have been the word. Then you say the next letter we're going to do, we'll do a G here. The next letter is G. And the student will, and you'll tell the students, this is good. We already have the bad. Now all we do is add the good. So now we have bad, good. No guessing. Now, before we press on, we, our time I'm sure is almost up. The last thing I want to present, there is a way that this theory can be proven. I've proven it with over 250 tests that I've given. I give these almost every week. This is called the Miller word identification assessment. And the